From the definitions of previous lectures, we know that the DFT of a block signal X is defined as this sum here. Therefore, we can rewrite the DFT as a matrix multiplication with the matrix T with the elements given by e to the power of minus j 2 times pi divided by capital N times k times n, where n is the time and row index and k is the frequency and column index. Using the signal block vector given here, we can rewrite the DFT of block M as a matrix multi multiplication y of m is equal to x of m times t, where t is a matrix with these elements here. This is the matrix formulation of the DFT, where the matrix multiplication given here is yk of m, is the sum here, like we've seen, similar to this here. Here now we can extract the equivalent impulse responses. Now we can compare the above transform on 3 with the convolution and the downsampling equation given here. So we have this symbol here to indicate that there is this downsampling. And we see that here the index n for our signal x has the reverse order or reverse sign as in equation 3. But since we are interested in the equivalent impulse response, we simply reverse the index order in the transform equation 3 and we can use index substitution when n is substituted by n minus 1 minus n prime so this is what we will do, we will substitute n by this here and we will still obtain the sum because the sum ordering doesn't change the result so now we have here this um, equation with the sum and we uh, replaced n by n minus 1 n prime and we get this equation here. When we compare this with our convolution sum in equation 4 in here, it looks like the convolution sum with the phase index of n0 equals to n minus 1 and with future length equal to the block length L so L equals to n when we compare these two equations here. This indicates that yk of m contains phase n minus 1 of the downsample subband signal. Through this comparison, we obtain the equivalent impulse response of our DFT given by here. So this is the equivalent impulse response. This is now the equivalent analysis impulse response of our DFT interpreted as an analysis future bank. Observe that it can also be interpreted as a rectangular window of length n with modulation of this exponential term. In conclusion, the DFT can also be seen as a special kind of a future bank. Each DFT coefficient can be seen as a sample of one of the downsampled subbands. Each column of our transform matrix T represents the impulse response of one subband filter, but in reverse order. We can read the impulse response out of the transform matrix starting from the bottom and going up.